So we're going to look at some statistics and symptoms of depression and we'll particularly focus on Christian depression and if you're interested in getting more details or getting the complete teaching we have here you go to christianhealthfordepression.org or veteransfreefromptsd.org and again we have uh, I would also recommend if you're interested or if you have this um, you want some you want some information here you want some teaching uh, if you're suffering from these oppressions or you're a pastor or a counselor uh, go to Christian Health for Depression and click on the key biblical principles. There's 10 key biblical principles and then we have about 25 video teachings. But the key principles, you can listen to those and see if you're interested. Listen to the 10 key principles. Um, those key principles, we believe that uh, we've, we've had many people come out of, this, of these oppressions. Uh, we've had good success and we've got some good testimonies. This works. The Word of God does work. The truth will set the captives free. Jesus has come to set the captives free. So it, it this does work. So in the United States today, it affects about 20% of the population. There is twice as many women as men experiencing depression. And this is interesting also. We do um, work with people who have <coughs> suicide issues and suicidal thoughts. And it's... Uh, the stats here, even though these stats go up and down a little bit, but 15% of depressed people will commit suicide. So this is a very serious issue affecting, you know, more than 17 million Americans and who knows how many around the world. And we know in different countries that suicide and depression are major problems in Europe, for instance. In Ireland, they, they've been doing pretty well in Ireland here. They've been tackling this issue in Ireland for some time and in Scotland also. But men are more likely to be to hide depression from themselves and others by self-medicating with alcohol or drugs or working excessively long hours. The interesting also that the onset of, true, of depression increases sharply d during the teenage years. We've seen this, that um, you know anybody who suffers any kind of traumatic event as a teenager or a younger child, any sexual molestation, uh, these things can cause, these are spiritual problems, they can cause depression and they can cause PTSD, um, post-traumatic stress disorder. So we see that uh, and then it comes out during the teenage years then gradually rises to peak, peak around 40 and uh, the average onset then is uh, you know age 30 with treatment begin usually about three years. Again these are statistics that go up and down and change somewhat over the years. Types of depression, major depression characterized by a deep sense of sadness or unhappiness and a lack of interest in things used to enjoy such as hobbies, friends or sex. Uh, very common again. Bipolar disorder characters, characterized by alternating periods of depression and elation. The high periods are called mania. So the causes of depression and again this is why we go into this thing and look at the spiritual side. Uh, from our experience if you don't tackle the spiritual side you usually don't get any success. When you tackle the spiritual side of these oppressions, like depressions, panic attacks, PTSD, um, anxiety, fear, when you tackle the spiritual side of things, it's amazing how people can get free. So the cause of depression, there is no clear cause. Scientifically, that's um, that's a pretty scientific fact. There are no, they, they look in the brain and they've studied a lot of things. There are lots of, lots of opinions out there on these things, but scientifically, empirical evidence, there is none. There is no clear cause. Uh, there's a doc a Dr. Peter Bregin, Peter B-R-E-G-G-I-N, look him up on the internet. And he has said for some time now that there's no such thing as a chemical imbalance. He said that these this chemical imbalance was a study done by Eli Lilly way back um, a number of years ago. And they came up with this chemical imbalance. But when they looked at the studies that was done, they turned out to be fairly false. From again, a big drug company. Uh, I mean, what do we expect? But again, this is Dr. Peter Bregan, and he. I would recommend people that listen to me here, go to the internet and look him up, Dr. Peter Bregan, B-R-E-G-G-I-N, and listen to some of his um, videos on his website. They're very informative. And he said, he, he also said that antidepressants can only mask the problem and that these drugs are very dangerous. Now, again, if you're taking these drugs, you know, um, just look into just look into these things. Talk to your doctor, and uh, you know check out and see what the truth really is here. Because there's been a lot of falsehoods um, that have come out, and now now we know that these things um, 
these things have been looked at in, in, intensely. And we know there are other, you know, there, there are people out here like Dr. Bregan who are actually telling us the truth about some of these things. So he calls psychiatry a pseudoscience and suggests that there are better approaches. And there are better approaches. So we talked about depression and uh, here are symptoms of anxiety attacks. We're going to run through these very quickly because I want to get to the meat of the details here as we get into this thing. And we're talking about, again, freedom from stress, fear, anxiety, oppressions, free freedom from depression. And we're going to tackle and we're going to look at the, the spiritual side of these things, underlying beliefs they're called. And um, it's amazing, you know, it's amazing when you look at, from, at the spiritual side and how the Word of God can help here. It's amazing what, uh, what is in the Word of God related to some of these issues. So we're going to jump into these fairly quickly. So I'm going to go over these fairly quickly. You can see them here on the screen. Um, feeling of overwhelming fear. Surge of doom and gloom. Feeling, feeling like you're in grave danger. Shortness of breath. Panic attacks. Chest pressure or pain. Feeling detached from reality. So these are all fairly common uh, symptoms of anxiety. And here we're going to talk about panic attacks. And again, the symptoms of panic attacks. Panic attacks, anxiety attacks, fear, depression. They are all kind of related here. And um, so a strong urge to get out, run away and escape from danger. Panic attacks, confusion, difficulty thinking clearly. Feeling you're about to lose control, very, very common. Feeling you're about to lose control. Feeling that um, feeling that you're going to lose your mind. This is very common. Very common attack. When we talk to people that uh, they're hearing, they're inside, they're feeling that they're, they're losing their mind. Again, these are, spiritual, these are spiritual issues. That's why you need to look at the spiritual side. Where is that coming from? You're going to lose your mind. Where, where are those thoughts coming from? So we're going to look into that a little deeper. Emotionally upset, distressed, feel like you might want, feel like you're going crazy, feel like feel like you're about to freak out. Uh, that's very common. Also, you're going to freak out. You can't control yourself. Pounding heart, racing heart, very common. So these are some of the symptoms of the panic attack.